Uh, welcome to uh, another live stream. Uh, it seems like it's a, a popular topic at the moment. Um, my good friend Ryan is uh, live streaming it as well at the moment on a very similar topic, I believe. Um, and obviously uh, Bjorn just released something, uh, podcast, vidca uh, vodcast or something like that, um, on the same topic. So uh, let's hope we're all pretty much <laughs> saying the same thing because otherwise people will get confused. Um, but realistically, the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the technique and the ideas behind uh, defoliation are pretty much, um, pretty much the same. It's the removal or non-removal of leaves uh, on uh, deciduous trees at this time of year. Uh, and so we're going to look at that. Um, uh, I'm going to ignore the chat uh, for a while. Um, please try and just keep all the to uh, any questions that you that you do um, ask about maples. Uh, anybody asking questions about beech, uh, or cove, or hornbeam, anything like that will be ignored uh, because we're going to do uh, a stream on that uh, coming up soon because the techniques that we apply to maples and the, t the, the techniques that we apply to uh, those other species like the, the alternating species so beech, hornbeam, zelkova etc are very different uh, and so we're not going to we're not going to cross the streams uh, and so, yeah, we're just looking at maples, tripe maples, Japanese maples, and some of their variants, um, and uh, kind of an introduction to the uh, the concept of defoliation. So a lot of this uh, uh, information and this knowledge will then continue on um, to uh, to those other species. The, 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 sort of the, the theories and the, the principles are the same, um, but uh, perhaps the, the, the sort of the practice is just uh, is, is slightly different. Uh, so... Uh, there's no complaints about the sound uh, today, uh, which is good. So I'm going to just, like I say, ignore the chat um, and I'll answer questions as and when I get the opportunity. Um, so uh, thank you very much to everybody for tuning in uh, again and to all of the donors and the people who have been uh, supporting um, these live streams. Uh, they are free, um, but we are you know, asking for sort of donations to keep... Uh, the uh, just everything going. Uh, it takes a lot of time um, out of my life to, to do these. I'm quite happy to do it, um, but obviously, you know, uh, it's sort of, it is nice to to, to make a, a living out of, out of bonsai. Um, we're not hard up for cash, uh, and so a lot of people kind of like um, are mistaking the word donation for we're a charity. I just want to say that we're not. So people out there worrying about this and stuff like that. It's, it's not the case. Uh, it's just uh, looking at building this into a potential business model for the future and things like that. So that's kind of like where we're, where, where we're sort of coming from. Um, and those people have donated. Um, there are kind of like extra benefits to, to that. And we're just kind of like working on ramping up those things. Uh, one of the things that's worked uh, really quite well, much more than um, I was expecting, was a thing called discord which is a kind of like a, a forum come group chat sort of similar to the chat that's going on um alongside the the, the live stream uh but sort of split into different topics and things like that and so you know people have access to that and there's a lot of sort of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, advice being given um and also uh when i get the opportunity i get on there and answer people's questions uh, and people have a kind of a uh, a bit like a hotline uh, to, to to the Monkey Mountain, um, but to be honest, a lot of the the best information has come from uh, the experienced members that are on there. So thank you to all of those people who are kind of like answering everybody else's questions. Uh, it makes my life a whole lot easier, and that's always the best way. Uh, I spoke to uh, Ralph, um, uh, one of our uh, sort of good friends and, and, and supporters here uh, from from the Netherlands. Uh, the other day about um, uh, Satsuki work, and he said it's great that the kind of like the community and it's it, it's, I don't know, it's a bit more believable when it comes from uh, other uh, enthusiasts than, than when it comes from me. It, it, it was a backhanded compliment, I think. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of like the that that sort of community thing is is is, is good. So uh, I'm glad that that's working well. Uh, long may it continue. Right, so uh, let's get into uh, the topic of defoliation of uh, of maples because this is a one of those kind of like misunderstood um, practices and quite often misapplied, um, thinking that sort of like one size fits all uh, in terms of like the, the the management of foliage with with maples, and a lot of times uh, problems arise from this. Uh, and so before we get into kind of like some of the details, I should just sort of set some definitions of what 
the terms are that we're going to talk so some people talk about defoliation when they mean leaf thinning or leaf cutting okay so there's some different uh, sort of definitions there uh, so we'll just sort of go through some of those a little brief video to just sort, of, just sort of mention exactly what I mean by all of these terms so the types of work we're doing at this type of this time of year okay would be shoot pruning back to the first node so where we've got these long extensions coming out coming back into the first node so when we talk about shoot pruning that's generally what we mean when we're talking about defoliation what we mean is the cutting off of leaves either one of a pair or both so an aggressive defoliation will be to remove both by doing that we will get a second flush of growth from the base of those leaves in here where new new buds are formed so we will get a second flush of growth from there if we cut just one leaf off then the response to send out new growth is not activated because we still have one leaf on and so we will not get the second flush of growth however we will have 50 percent less foliage therefore more sunlight can penetrate into a tree more air can pass through and also this area here becomes 50 percent weaker okay another variation of that would be to reduce the surface area of the leaf by cutting so when we talk about leaf cutting this is what we mean okay so removing a certain amount you could even go as far back as this reducing the surface area of the leaf to reduce the photosynthetic capability to allow more sunlight in but to not stimulate that growth generally what people will do is cut across like this or just to leave or just to leave one finger sorry i was watching my video uh right so there's some of the definitions uh of, you know about what we mean um uh, so i hope that makes it a little bit clearer um, but realistically, what we're looking at doing is the deliberate reduction in foliage on a maple for various different reasons. Um, and uh, we need to sort of look at, uh, at that um, uh, in terms of kind of like the uh, energy levels within, uh, within trees. Uh, and so if you remember back to uh, like the energy concepts that we sort of looked at, um, in, in the previous stream um, then uh, what we uh, see is uh, this kind of like the fluctuating energy levels throughout the tree uh, throughout the year um, and kind of like sort of managing uh, sort of, sort of conceptualizing um, what's going on with the with, with the energy uh, I should have got the, those uh, <laughs> those graphs on, on here uh, I'll see if I can't get them um, but uh, what we're looking at doing is kind of managing the energy um, of, of the tree uh, from spring going through into, into, into summer to try and achieve a certain goal. Uh, and so at the moment, once these, uh, you know, our, our maples have, 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 have grown out, they started the, 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 you know, the start of the year with a, with a sort of a, a finite amount of energy. And they've expended some of that energy in this uh, fresh new growth that we see. Okay, um, so it's it's used up some of its resources. Maples are very used to losing a lot of their foliage uh, early on in the season. Um, hands up who has suffered uh, a lot of um, wind scorch this year. Hands up who suffered frost damage this year, and hands up who's just suffered some sun scorch just today and the last couple of days. Yes, maples are just the, one of the biggest problems that you have uh, with maples is that sort of early season sort of super soft and tender foliage. Okay, um, and one of the, the the things that happens with them is they, they kind of like have that energy in reserve and they're able to sort of spend some of it again. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just have a look at 
Um, one example of that um, with a sort of small little um, Miyasama trident that I've got, uh, which every single year, without fail, gets frost damaged. You'd think I would learn, but for some reason it just gets damaged. Every and it wasn't even in the frost this year. It got damaged when it got down to about minus, uh, not minus, when it got down to about sort of four or five degrees. There wasn't even a frost. I came out in the morning and the, and the leaves were all messed up. So I'm quite used to dealing with this tree. So we'll just have a quick look at uh, me doing that for the... Here is a Miyasama trident. So a trident maple, slightly different leaves, slightly different growth habit. Uh, and then this year it's got annihilated by the frost. So you can see all of these damaged leaves. Uh, the second flush of growth is coming out, but it's really still soft, very, very soft. And so this situation, all we would ever look to do is just to remove these damaged leaves. So in this case, the tree is in a sort of a, an energy deficit expended energy in the spring it had all of that energy wasted because the leaves got damaged before they could recoup the energy that they that was used to generate them the tree had energy in reserve and so it sent out a second flush of growth and so essentially it's used twice as much as it normally would do and so we just have to compensate for that by not asking it to do too much by ensuring that the foliage it has on there remains on there and then next year protecting it in the spring a little bit better. So all of those damaged leaves have been taken off and we just got this fresh tender new stuff which is going through and that will just be left alone to grow, push out as much as it wants to and then we'll look at pruning it back after leaf drop. But the tree's gone through a shock. We need to just let it recover from that. Sorry, I was just trying to find that, those uh, other files, but I can't. Um, anyway, so yes, that's the what we look at doing with uh, with any sort of uh, sort of frost damaged trees or, or any sort of um, leaf damaged trees. One, one of the Q, uh, Q and A's, uh, a few people asked about dealing with that, and um, yeah, basically when that sort of thing happens, you just have to kind of like write off the year as um, uh, kind of. Not able, not able to sort of push the tree uh, in the development sort of stages that you perhaps would do, because what we look, one of the things that we perhaps would look, be looking at doing with um, sort of defoliation and sort of removing some of the leaves is pushing second flushes of growth, so that you get two um, sort of uh, sets of branches, two sets of leaves, two sets of, uh, of, of growth within the year to, to build up ramification. Uh, and so if that sort of happens early on in the year, so in this case with that uh, Miyasama trident. It happens on a quite frequent basis. Um, three years ago, had a, um, a very, very sort of uh, cold and frosty period at the start of May, um, and every single one of my maples basically got uh, frost damaged. That year, you just, I just had to sort of write it off uh, and just let that second flush of, 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 of soft, tender growth come back again, uh, and then the, let the tree sort of recoup its energy because it, it spent out that energy but not yet received it back before the leaves had hardened off. Okay, so that's one of the sort of fundamental concepts you kind of got to um, understand about uh, what's going on with the foliage. So now we're at this time of year where the leaves are hardening off uh, on, on the majority of the trees. Um, some of them will be will have hardened off a couple of weeks ago. Some of them may still be a little bit softer. Uh, on this tribe maple, for example, here, uh, this was repotted this year. Um, um, and the pot was made just there, ever so slightly larger. Um, it's been in the polytunnel for, for a while and so the leaves are a little bit softer because of that. When you have trees kind of like leafing out outside um, and uh, kind of like being exposed to the normal um, uh, sort of climactic conditions then the, the leaves do tend to harden off a little bit uh, quicker. If you keep them in, in, a, in a greenhouse sort of type environment and then you, uh, then you sort of suddenly put them out in sort of baking hot sun that's when you can have some some uh, some serious damage because the, the the leaves haven't hardened off enough and they can't cope with that intense sunlight. If they if they're allowed to kind of leaf out normally, then that 
increase is, is uh, uh, gradual. So and so the, the, the leaves can kind of like uh, cope with it usually. Um, so this is uh, still a little bit on the softer side uh, and you can see a uh, slightly different colour, sort of fresher foliage still coming, sort of pushing through. Okay, uh, and so when you feel the, the leaves, they should feel uh, a little bit hard, a little bit leathery, uh, as opposed to sort of really soft um, and, and kind of like almost sort of tearing. Uh, as you do bonsai a little bit more um, and, and sort of got sort of three or four years of experience, you'll, you'll come to know uh, when that sort of best time is. If you come and defoliate too early, basically you're going to set the tree back because it hasn't regained the energy that it's spent uh, using uh, to, to, to generate those leaves. By now, by this point, essentially the, the, the leaves have kind of, we're back to, to sort of like square one um, where it's regained all the energy it's spent. And now if we remove it, the tree's going to use some some more of its reserves, but then it will it will have the chance to sort of uh, regain those and then get more by the end of the year. And so really it's a way of kind of um, managing the, how much energy the tree is able to, 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 to sort of generate for itself. Okay, and so when we're looking at doing this, we have a lot of sort of uh, considerations that um, have to sort of play into in, into our uh, sort of judgment, uh, and how much we defoliate, how aggressively we do it, um, whether it's uh, sort of total, so where we take every single leaf off of the tree, or if it's partial, where we take some of the external leaves off, uh, or if it's just leaf thinning, where we just remove, where we sort of reduce the surface area down. Uh, it's going to depend on a lot of different factors. Uh, and being able to sort of read the, the energy level of your tree and kind of have a feel for that uh, is very, very important. So getting to know your trees is obviously important. I've had this tree here for sort of three or four years. I know how it behaves. Um, I know that even though it's been repotted, it was a light repot, uh, I can come in and I can sort of do some leaf removal, some of the larger leaf removal on this, uh, and the tree will just keep growing, won't be a problem. Okay, so being able to read the, the, the species, being able to read the individual tree itself uh, is important. Uh, and really that's kind of a, an understanding of, of, of energy levels. Okay, and that will differ between um, varieties within the sort of Japanese maple. So this one at the back that we have here, um, for example, uh, this is uh, Sangokaku, which is one of the um, sort of slightly weaker varieties. Um, and this one never gets touched at uh, this time of year, okay? Purely on the fact of uh, just sort of the, the, the variety uh, and the fact that this tree is just kind of like weaker than the most. Uh, so when we're looking at sort of things like Sagen uh, in particular, to shoujo not so much, to shoujo are pretty, pretty robust um, as long as they're still kind of, um, you know, sort of growing very well. Then there's some of those, you know, sort of with the say again, you, you want to you want to be applying these techniques with a, a much lighter hand. With some of the other varieties that we, that we have, um, some of the more kind of like the garden type varieties that you have, you want to be applying these techniques with a very heavy hand because they are so robust uh, and they just keep coming and coming and coming. Uh, I have a couple of those sort of trees here and just completely defoliate them sort of every couple of years. Okay, so. Understanding the, the the variety, understanding the energy levels of the tree, uh, are one of the sort of import first sort of things to to, to kind of um, give you uh, to have as part of your your, your decision making process because it is just basically a feel um, of you know is this tree going to be strong enough to, to respond to me willfully removing its ability to generate any energy because that's what we're doing we're deliberately weakening these trees for various different reasons. Okay, so what are those reasons? Okay, and one of the most important reasons is basically to balance up energy from top to bottom and inside to out. And that inside to out is particularly of, of great importance um, for, for maples and things like this. This is just a big blob of green. This one here is an even bigger blob of green. Okay, and so sunlight penetration to those inner leaves on the inside when it becomes so dense uh, is, is reduced quite a lot okay and so that reduction in sunlight penetration inside and also airflow airflow is one of the most kind of um, 
kind of like underrated or sort of misunderstood kind of aspect of this. What we're trying to do as well is get that airflow through, okay, so it doesn't become stuffy in in there, and so we don't end up with with, with issues of the of the leaves dying off because of because of the sort of st the stuffy air. Getting that fresh air coming through really really is important. But really, it's kind of about getting some sunlight into those um, uh, weaker buds and branches on the inside. Okay. If there are none on the inside, or if those inner sections are very, very weak, the defoliation is not the way to go ahead. Okay, so this is going to be like a little bit of an idea that um, is sort of very similar to, to what we were talking about with the taxa stream, in that in order to get back budding, in order to, to, to get some strength to the inner parts of the branch, what you actually have to do is let the, the branch let the, the tips of the branches grow and strengthen up. Okay, so we're just gonna have a look at one tree where that is happening. Okay, this is a tree that I've had for, for, for many, many years. Um, and it's one of my oldest trees. Uh, and through my own fault, it got weak uh, over the last couple of years because I worked on it too much. Uh, and so now I've lost a lot of the branches on the inside. Okay, so defoliating to get sunlight into bare branches is the complete wrong thing to do. So we'll just have a look at that. This is the trident maple I've had for a long time uh, and it's undergone a stressful couple of years. The uh, inner branches have died off because of too much pinching and too much uh, holding back. And then a um, catastrophic watering incident last year uh, and the trees sort of weakened a little bit. So. Uh, we are going to let it grow. All of these shoots down here particularly, we're going to let it go. And so in order to strengthen the inner parts of the tree for in this situation, where the trees become weakened and the branches may become a little bit compromised, then the way in which to strengthen the inside is to allow excessive growth. Allow those extensions out, get lots of leaves, get lots of photosynthesis going, strengthen up those branches again before cutting back later on in the year. The only thing we would want to do is just make sure that the top of the tree doesn't get too strong by just going along and taking off some of those excessively strong shoots up there. That will allow more growth to come from the inside and allow more growth particularly from for these lower branches. So overall, we're letting the tree go, but not just letting it do whatever it wants. We are just nudging it downwards and outwards a little bit. You'll notice there's a lot of fertilizer on there. This has been fed heavily from the spring in order to push that growth and rebuild the vigor. So we're not worried about sunlight getting into any of these inner branches because most of them are weak or potentially non-existent. What we're looking at doing is exercising the tree by making it work a lot. And the easiest way to do that after a stressful situation is to allow some extensions out. Once we've got that vigor back in, then we can cut back, get an explosion of growth on the inside and then start to look after them a little bit better. Sorry, sorry, I was uh, focusing on the chat. Uh, so uh, basically, yeah, the um, the techniques of uh, sort of pinching and um, kind of like trying to hold back the tree uh, have been applied to, to that uh, trident for, for a number of years and uh, it got pushed too far. Uh, the, uh, the branch tips became lignified and weakened and uh, the, the first sort of sign of stress meant that it basically sort of collapsed. Uh, we lost a lot of those inner branches because they were weakened. 
uh, even though kind of like over the you know a few years uh this sort of partial defoliation technique was was performed to allow sunlight in there they just weren't strong enough because i was i was sort of pinching it too much uh and so it went past the point where i should have sort of read the signs and stopped and let it grow out uh, and so this year it's uh, it's now a different approach is being applied where there's a lot of fertilizer and basically just kind of like letting it grow out um and there's been a lot of kind of like uh, discussion about the uh, the hedge pruning sort of technique. Uh, somebody mentioned it in the chat about kind of like water pool and things like that. There is a place for that approach in bonsai. Okay, uh, I'm not saying it's completely just nonsensical because it gets a certain type of result. And there are times for that tree, uh, and perhaps for, for this tree when it's very early on in development, where you would be taking that approach, feeding it heavily, letting it grow out, cutting it back, letting it grow out, kind of like building up that head of steam. Okay. But there is a limit to the, to, to, to the kind of, uh, the level of refinement and the level of delicacy that you will get with that technique. Okay. And so once you step, once you've got that head of steam up, then you shift into a different technique and when you get into the pinching and things like that. But if you do that pinching too much, then the, the vigor of the tree can drop. Then you have to kind of revert back to a little bit more of a, uh, kind of like a pushing it sort of technique and so that's what we're doing there and so w with that sort of technique where we're looking at really pushing the growth and getting it really super healthy we're not looking at any defoliation at all we're going to let those leaves open up get as big as they can let extensions grow off as much as they can within reason so that we've still got that balance between top and bottom get it healthy exactly the same as uh, as Duncan was talking about with the um, with the taxa stream Okay, let's get it, get it growing out, getting it super healthy, and then cutting back at the appropriate time when there's enough energy to sort of redistribute um, and, and, and create those back buds on the inside. Then once we have them, then we move into the into the idea of kind of like thinning things out, partial defoliation to let the sunlight to let the air into the into those branches. Okay, so once the, those buds on the inside have enough energy, then we have to maintain those energy levels throughout the year. We have to improve on them. Uh, and, and sort of get them going. And so once you get into that sort of stage and the tree's sort of healthy and it's happy, we need to main, try, and, try and keep the energy levels up, not push it too far back like I did with that dryden, uh, and make sure that on both a macro level and a micro level that we've got balance. Okay, so what do I mean by that? On a macro level, the whole tree is healthy and vigorous. Okay, so when we look at the tree, it's, it's growing well, the root system is strong. There's lots of foliage on it. It's growing um, all over. It, it, it's doing very well. Then, we're, well, then what we need to do is then sort of look at uh, the branches uh, and the energy levels on a micro level, and that's where we start looking at each individual area and how it relates to to the rest of the tree. So, for example, with this one here, on a macro level, the tree is sort of very healthy. On a on a on a, on a sort of Micro level, this branch here was ever so slightly uh, weaker than, than the others. You can sort of tell that by the, the leaf size. Okay, so there are very, very few uh, larger leaves uh, developed on, on this branch here. Whereas this middle section, the top section, and even on this branch around the back, we're starting to get slightly larger leaves. So just by doing, by looking at the tree, I can tell that this area here is ever so slightly weaker. And so I'm gonna be doing very, very little defoliation on this weaker area. But what I'll look at doing is coming in and taking off some of the, uh, the, the larger leaves on these medium and stronger areas. Uh, and with Trident, what you can do is just, you don't need to have a pair of scissors, you can just, if, you, if you've got a sharp enough nail and you're not yanking them out, just come in and pinch off the, that leaf. Okay, then just go through and take off some of those larger leaves, okay. And we'll, by doing that sort of partial defoliation of the external leaves, we're allowing more sunlight in to the inner parts of the tree. And we're also restricting the development of those more vigorous parts of the tree. Okay, So that partial defoliation technique is a way of balancing up the tree on a micro level. Of the, you know, the energy levels on, on that sort of low, that micro level. And so we read those areas and can adjust the amount of foliage that we have accordingly okay so when we're looking on the inside we think okay how can i get a little bit more energy on the inside those buds on the inside are strong 
because I've been working on it in the correct way over a number of years? How can I make sure that they have enough sunlight, have enough airflow uh, to, 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 to strengthen? Okay, and so removing some of the, the larger leaves around it will do that. Okay, if we're looking at really pushing second flushes of growth, then we'll be taking off a lot, a lot more. Okay, but this tree has having been repotted. One of the questions in the chat was, can you do this to um, a, a freshly repotted tree? Yes, no, mate. Yeah. Okay, all of these things. There's no uh, people are looking for for, for 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 definite answers. Okay, there are no definite answers with this technique. It's about learning your tree, reading the the situations, and making a judgment call based on all of the evidence and all of the, the, the processes that are going on and all of your kind of objectives. This is an objective-led uh, technique. So what is my objective? My objective is to try and balance things up. My objective is to try and get energy generation on the inside. How do I do that? Letting those, uh, those leaves on the inside get a little bit more sunlight, get a little bit more airflow, and then they'll be able to generate their own energy. Okay, so it's all objective-led. It's all about sort of trying to having a clear idea of what your priorities are and, and what the energy levels of the tree are and how you can then manipulate it. So some trees uh, get repotted and you can do that too. Other trees get repotted and you can't. Okay. So I've got actually a, uh, a sort of slightly smaller uh, sort of showing-ish sort of type maple, um, which was again repotted this year and we're going in and doing uh, quite a thinning exercise because it is very, very strong and it responded to the repot uh, a little bit too, um, kind of like, a little bit too well. So, here we go. Here we have a large Shohin Japanese maple. Uh, it was repotted this year, but it's grown absolutely, uh, very, very vigorously. Over the last few years, uh, it's done exactly the same. It's been very, very vigorous. Uh, we've been working on creating a nice, dense, uh, compact branching structure in there and so uh, it's been pinched quite well uh, and defoliated over the last few years this year because of the repot it was allowed to just grow out a little bit um, so what we'll look at doing is trying to cut back any of these elongated shoots initially so anywhere where the shoots have extended past two or three nodes And then we'll look at defoliation. So because this tree has been styled many, many times or worked on for many, many years uh, and is re relatively well balanced, I don't have to give too much consideration to any stronger or weaker areas. The tree is very well balanced. Okay, so that's the most of those shoots sort of cut back to just a single node. Now what we can look at doing is letting some sunlight and airflow into these weaker leaves on the inside. So we'll definitely look at the removal of one of the pairs of larger leaves on the outside. So we'll just go through, pick out, find the pair, cut one of those leaves off. If in the pair one leaf is stronger than the other, cut the strong one off. These lower branches down here, we will not be doing any, any uh, defoliation. We won't cut any of those leaves because these branches are slightly weaker. So because we have weakness on the inside, any energy that gets generated by these big uh, leaves on the outside will be flowing upwards and downwards through this this branch and so that's going to help those. There is no kind of auction producing shoot at the moment so it's not going to demand all the energy right out to the tips. So we're just taking one off each pair Generally, where it's very congested, you would be looking for to remove the one uh, of the pair which is causing any congestion with other branches. So, always looking to try and 
create space. So as I'm going through now, I've, I'm, I'm sort of going over areas I've already done. So you've got to really just make sure that you, you, you are cutting only one of the pair. So paying attention to the branch divisions where the leaf, where the leaves come from. So that's pretty much most of the areas that I want to keep in check has been taken down to one single leaf. Now, if there are any other areas where the leaves are still perhaps a little bit on the large side, then what we can do is leaf cut them. So taking them down to that single section, that single finger is the more attractive way of doing it. Okay, but in order to do that, you have to do two cuts. Whereas going across like this is just one cut. So we'll just do that on some of the largest, strongest leaves that remain, particularly in this, these denser areas here. Okay, there's, some, there's a small amount of wire on there. That looks as though it's ready to come off. It's just about ready to, to dig in. In this case, because it's so fine, I'm going to just go very carefully cut through it. But ideally, if you can unwind the wire, I can unwind it here. But on those delicate branch tips, it's much more uh, suitable to try and nip it off with a very fine pair of, uh, of, of wire cutters. So I don't tend to, do, to wire my deciduous trees too much um, for the reason that I have always been traveling a lot and wire scars on deciduous trees are very difficult to get out. There are times when it's necessary to manipulate branches into positions where you want them. So that must be done with care. So as not to damage them. Okay, that's probably about enough. Just check for weeds. So you'll notice there's no fertilizer on the tree. Uh, we won't fertilize until any sort of second flush of growth that might happen has come out hardened off. Okay, but the objective with this is to not force a second flush of growth, but to allow sunlight in, airflow through to those smaller, weaker foliage on the inside, which is the, the important bits, uh, and to try and balance up a little bit of growth. Okay, so to stop the top from getting any stronger, to help strengthen the, the, the lower branches by not removing any foliage. Made that video. Um, so that's looking at a situation where we've been working on uh, the ramification on the inside through, uh, through pinching, uh, through um, uh, doing some defoliation techniques uh, to get sort of second flushes of growth over the last few years. Uh, and so there's energy inside, the short nodes on the inside, uh, and then it's been repotted this year, and it's gone a little bit buck wild, it's kind of like grown out. Uh, and so in order to kind of like maintain the, 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 the work that we've been doing over the last couple of years, in order to, to have those smaller leaves on the inside to, to remain strong, we've gone in and looked at that kind of like partial defoliation technique. On some of those longer um, nodes and some, some of these uh, sort of real long um, shoots and things like that, that have come out because of that repot, we can look at cutting that back um, at leaf drop. And so there's a certain amount of kind of like foes wanting to stay on there in order to help push it through the repot. Um, and um, 
to to, for, to, to build up roots um, for the for you know later on in the year. Uh, but there's also that kind of like wanting to, to, to make sure that there's enough sunlight and airflow through for those those inner leaves and things like that. Okay, so the, the, the partial defoliation technique about letting the sunlight in there, letting air in there, is a main like a maintenance sort of type of technique where we've got the buds, we've got the branches, we've been working on them over over a number of years, and we're, we're looking at sort of keeping them. Okay, so th this is where we're looking at really balancing that energy from the, from the top to the bottom, the inside to out, making sure that the outside isn't getting too 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 vigorous and shading the inner bits okay that's what the partial defoliation sort of technique does okay so when we're looking at a more kind of aggressive and sort of total defoliation technique um, or when we're looking at sort of much rawer material in order to, to build up um, a lot of kind of like uh, ramifications so getting second and third flushes of growth uh, in very hot uh, climates with trident maples anyway um, then it's on much younger trees much earlier on in development and we're also uh, 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 sort of um, pursuing a bit more of an aggressive fertilizing regime okay so we'll look at uh, one example of a bit more of a, uh, an aggressive um, uh, defoliation technique on a trident maple now trident maples are uh, just like so much more robust and so much more responsive to to, to kind of a, a a more con sort of continual type of um, uh, defoliation techniques and things like that. So, uh, you know, sort of as I was saying with the, showing with the other one, just that going through and just taking off those big leaves, more and more just keep coming out. You'll just keep getting like sort of second and third flushes of growth coming through. Um, as they do, you just come through and just keep picking it, picking it, picking it. As long as you're kind of like maintaining a really good, healthy amount of foliage on the tree, it's just going to keep coming and keep coming and keep coming. And you, that's just a way of, of, of sort of balancing it. And so they will respond well if they've got the energy within them and you don't attack them too hard like I did with my uh, layered one. Um, and, and you're sort of fertilizing enough and repotting on a fairly frequent basis. They will uh, respond very well to, to, to an aggressive technique. Uh, and so here is... Uh, uh, an example of that. So this is a trident maple. Uh, it's 13, 14 years in development from a, from a cutting. Um, and we're still kind of in the fairly raw stage of it. Um, it's not been repotted this year. It's grown out really vigorously. I've cut back a couple of the shoots uh, throughout the year. I've not bothered to go in and sort of pinch it um, too precisely. Um, because it's just still quite a rough piece of material um, and what we're looking at doing is just building up some thickness in branches and, uh, and healing some wounds um, developing some thickness up in the top there so what we'll do is we'll just go through uh, and take off the larger leaves on the outside uh, and cut back some of the, the growth back to that first node so where the extensions have come out longer we'll cut back to just one pair of leaves and remove any of the larger leaves as we're going. The objective is to get sunlight to those inner branches on the inside there and also just balance up some of the growth. So we're doing that by cutting back to that first node everywhere. And then also to, to, to stimulate a second flush of growth on the stronger areas, make it grow a little bit more get more ramification so we can just go through and we'll be def doing quite a, an aggressive defoliation so taking off a lot of the leaves on the outside and leaving a lot of those inner weaker shoots weaker leaves left on the inside just to grow and to strengthen anything that's dead can be removed anything that's weak gets left So here, long shoot come out, we'll cut back to that first node and then take both of those leaves off so there's nothing left there. Same thing here, comes out to a couple nodes, take it back to that first node, can't cut through the tip there, 
Okay, that's the first node. Take those two big leaves off. So this is a pretty aggressive uh, defoliation. Most of the foliage has been taken off on the strong areas uh, and anything on the inside uh, that's weak or on the outside, which is perhaps still a little bit soft, has, uh, remains weaker shoots on the outside, but there's very few of those. Uh, and then just some of the weaker side shoots have been left on there, whereas the stronger bits have been defoliated. Don't worry about the, the long stems, they'll just drop off naturally and we'll get new growth forming from the nodes in here. So we just want to make sure that everything is nice and tight and compact like that. So we're just getting that one new node from the spring growth and then we'll get another flush of growth coming from there to build up another set of, uh, of twigs. Uh, the reason why we can do this on this tree is, as I said, it's still very young. Okay, it's still super vigorous and we are really pushing it in terms of uh, liquid fertilizer. And it is still very early on in the development. We don't have a lot of twigs and, and we're just kind of letting it, having a, a burst of energy early on in the, in, in the season. Uh, and so there's still a lot. Okay, uh, I think maybe I clicked the button there too early, but yeah, uh, it was pretty much over. Um, so just, uh, yeah, so, I mean, obviously there's a very, very vigorous tree there, uh, kind of like got cut back. Uh, a lot and it will respond by um, uh, by, by throwing out another sort of second flush of growth. Uh, there were a few people asking about the field maple uh, and somebody just there mentioned uh, it's even stronger than tribe maple. Um, uh, Paul Pashley, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the AC Campestre field maple is just a gangbusters tree. It just grows and grows and grows and grows. And so you can defoliate it aggressively. Uh, in fact, you have to because you're, what you're act, what you're trying to do with those super vigorous trees is actively get rid of energy. You're trying to throw it away because it's just generating too much, just generating too much. And by doing that, and by staying on top of the growth, by also doing sort of pinching, and you can pinch that second flush of growth as it comes through. So all of the things that we were talking about with the maple pinching streams in order of controlling the the node length and that extensions, you can do that to that second flush of growth with those really vigorous trees. Okay, with, with the less vigorous trees where you're not really trying to, to, to get that second flush of growth, where we're just looking at maintaining uh, what's on the inside, and um, it's not something that we have to worry about too much. But where you've got, uh, where you're going for that super aggressive, fertilize it heavily, sort of push it out growth sort of um, uh, approach, node length is a consideration. Um, and so one of the questions, um, which I'll just answer now because it's appropriate, um, was about um, wor worrying about that uh, um, oh, where's that bloody question sorry um, worrying about the, 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 the node length when you when you kind of like letting it grow out not really uh, okay so here it was from uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your name is there a risk of pushing so much energy in it that it ruins the short internodes of the branches you eventually want to come back to um, what tends to happen when it, when you've got a sort of a weakened tree like that is that the, the the first couple of nodes as it's starting to grow out are already quite sort of short uh, because it's it's sort of starting from a weakened position. So imagine that you, you you're kind of like getting out of bed and you're trying to like you you haven't got a lot of energy when you start to grow, but then as the day sort of goes along, you start racing away, and so those first couple of nodes when the when a tree is kind of beginning to grow out um, and it's regaining its strength, we're always going to be sort of tight. So there's always be something to sort of cut back to. Uh, and if then if the tree is really really vigorous anyway, you can kind of like cut back really hard and maples, tried maples particularly, they'll bud back quite easily on the inside there. So it's not something to, to sort of be too too concerned about. Uh, and that's where that kind of um, uh, hedge pruning type technique, where you're, you're fertilizing it a lot, letting it grow out and cutting it back hard, uh, sort of comes in. It's not the you're not basically what what's happening is you're then getting new flushes of growth from the trunk and, and real sort of um uh you're then sort of building the branching structure from those from, from those new shoots um so yes you would be uh treating the the campestrian much more like the trident maple absolutely so 
Uh, enough of the boldness chat, please, people. Um, you know, it's just uh, the people with hair will get jealous. Um, so that's kind of like uh, the like the uh, an aggressive technique, and it's not appropriate for all trees, and it's not appropriate for all situations. But that kind of idea about sort of managing the energy levels is is, is is an important part of that and building up the ramification. And what we're going to do is just look at a bit of a case study of a tree which um, kind of uh, goes against all of the um, uh, kind of sort of logic and theory about uh, a lot of maples. And this is one that kind of been a really great learning experience for me um, because it just taught me the importance of sort of treating each individual tree as an individual rather than just a maple and this is one thing that you really I, I talk about it with all the kind of the, the different species and the different streams and things like that um, it is essential to, to, to kind of take that approach with, with whatever your uh, um, with whatever species you're working with whatever tree you're working with don't think of it as like this is just a Scots pine don't think of it as this is just a trident maple look at that tree as an individual because there are differences within there are genetic differences within all of these different trees if they're grafted trees like the shishikashira for example even but there will always be uh sort of differences in that so, so somebody asked a question about the shishikashira it's that's not a tree where you would ever really be looking at doing any sort of defoliation the leaves on them are, are very very sort of small anyway and so the, the the sunlight penetration to the inside uh the airflow to the inside is never usually a a problem and so unless the tree's getting really vigorous and sort of shooting itself out shooting out and getting massive leaves on it you wouldn't really be doing uh any sort of defoliation on those but even where you've got those sort of trees which are grown from from cuttings and and, and the, the like the, the genetics are very much the same there will be variances in them depending on their kind of like their history you know what's been done to them over the years and their kind of the, the vascular systems the you know how how uh sort of strong strong the, the roots are how strong the, the the trunks are and things so getting into that habit of, of, of treating each uh tree individually is, is very important uh, and this maple that we're just going to look at now uh is a very good um example of that and um, i think we're halfway through the slide so i'm just gonna have to skip to to the uh to the start and i don't know how to do it just a sec uh so it's just ignore these pictures <laughs> sorry this was me doing the test to begin with We'll just get you now. You, now you know the, the 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 middle of the story. Okay, uh, so this is a, a tree that was uh, up at Willowbog. So any of the Willowbog um, regulars, uh, so Willowbog being the nursery up in the the, the northeast of England, uh, run by a very uh, special man. Uh, I do workshops up there uh, on a regular basis. This was a tree that was on the benches there, um, and as you can see, it kind of has a, a deadwood feature in there, uh, and uh, essentially it was just uh, from two branches. Uh, a student up there, Anthony Rain, who um, generously allowed me to, to show these pictures and has been working with me for a number of years, uh, sort of purchased it. Uh, and we came up with a, a plan of action to, to turn it into something half decent. Uh, and so that realistically, it, it suffered some damage. And so the first year, this was uh, back in 2012, it was just allowed to grow uh, and, and to develop and for us to get kind of like get an idea of um, what type of growth it was doing. Uh, this is the, the, the same tree then in... Um, uh, sort of the spring of 2013 um, after having been uh, sort of pruned back given a, an initial styling uh, and you see the the soil surface there has been has been um, sort of refreshed and so this was its first sort of steps to being um, turned into uh, uh, into a bonsai but it was so vigorous even after the repot um, it was pushing out so much growth that we uh, we, we did a partial uh, defoliation on the, on the on the tree there um, Sort of taking off some of the uh, um, the the some of the outer foliage to to, to let the, uh, the 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 weaker inner branches uh, photosynthesize and to strengthen them up, but more importantly to kind of like actively weaken the tree because it was sending out such vigorous growth um, from the tips. Uh, the node length was massive. It was just it was just ridiculously vigorous. Uh, this is the tree about um, a month and a half after that partial defoliation. So this is about August, uh, a couple of different. So it, it just bounced back from it, even though it had been repotted. You know, it had been a quite a, quite a big repot, uh, and it had bounced back. Uh, this is that same tree um, in the uh, in 2014 in the spring, uh, and so this tree in the spring it just pushes out really really vigorously, and 
uh, Anthony was pinching it out uh, two or three times a day. He'd need to look at it in the morning. He'd need to look at it in the, at lunchtime, uh, and then in the afternoon. Because if uh, if he didn't get on top of it, it just ex- ex- uh, exploded out. And you can see some of those long nodes um, in, in some of the, the, those branches there that were that, that got cut back uh, at this sort of time of year. Obviously, that's the the top of the tree. Uh, this was uh, left to grow out and to and to develop. So that would have been uh, left kind of un- unpruned. Uh, but you can start to see that that sort of shape beginning to to, to take form, uh, and the reason for that is for because of getting that sort of two flushes of growth a year because of that um, uh, partial defoliation. Okay, so this is the you know in in the spring, we're expecting that um, sort of flush of growth, and this is the tree after it had been pinched. Okay, so as I said, Anthony was on top of it; he was pinching all the time, really sort of staying on top of it, trying to to, to keep it from extending out. But it was just so vigorous and sending out massive leaves. You see the the size of those leaves there. Uh, and so we went in and gave it a complete defoliation, just took off every single leaf um, and it responded by pushing out really aggressively again because it's just such a vigorous tree. Okay, and so this is it a couple, uh, you know, sort of a couple of weeks later. That second flush of growth when you do that sort of uh, aggressive um, defoliation technique is always weaker, okay, because the tree is essentially sort of starting from uh, a slightly weaker position okay um and so it always kind of comes out that ever uh, that ever so slightly weaker okay but this is you know later on in the year opens out and it's still going absolutely gangbusters okay so this was um uh, a partial defoliation that was done in 2015 because the tree had started to slow down a little bit it started to learn to behave a little bit uh, and so we had a lot of those um uh, branches on the inside of the tree um they were there uh, they were they were sort of strong and healthy, and we wanted to maintain that. And so, rather than going in uh, and sort of pushing it too much, we, the the node length was starting to, to to come down. It was starting to behave itself a lot more. We just went for a partial defoliation there. Still not been repotted. So you know, two or th- it's now all three years since it's uh, no, two years since its last repot. Uh, and another aspect of of this trying to sort of control the vigor of this tree uh, was to, to 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 not repot it. Okay, so this is then into 2016, uh, where the vigor of the tree just keep it just kept going and going and going, um, and even though um, it was um, uh, pinched out well, it went through another complete defoliation process. And so every year the the, the technique was being uh, kind of like adapted, uh, depending on um, just kind of like how vigorous it was. Now, how it how it was responding in the spring, basically then sort of determined our uh, approach to the tree, and you can see through the through through the techniques that are being applied, the amount of secondary branches that are, are beginning to, to 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 develop there. Okay, uh, some styling was done uh, later on that year. Uh, branches begin sort of begin to uh, be pulled down and things like that because of the vigor of this tree uh, and because it's you know just just grows so quickly. Uh, actually kind of like applying wire to those branches is it was um, was perhaps not the best idea uh, and so just sort of using some guy wires obviously because it would thicken up so much and cause damage uh, was the way ahead with that one okay so then we come into uh, I think this was uh, 2017 um, or maybe it was uh, 18 um, and a partial defoliation so the tree has been in this pot for a number of years now uh, it was only repotted uh, last year, and so that was like six years, I think, between uh, between repots. This is really beginning to, to the, the the lack of um, uh, root refreshment, um, so sort of, as in sort of generating new roots, um, was really sort of starting to slow the tree down, and we were noticing the the lack of vigor. And so once the tree's uh, energy levels are, are sort of lowered. And the tree's not going as vigorously, then only partial defoliation techniques were applied. Okay. Oh, we've gone square. Uh, so turn your head. I don't know why that's happened. Uh, but that was it in November of uh, 2018, choosing a pot. Uh, it was then repotted uh, in 19 uh, into this beautiful Derek Aspinall pot, um, uh, a pot uh, befitting the tree, uh, finally. Um, and the, the, the repot was a um, a very minor one uh, and so we tried to sort of maintain that that root ball as much as possible um, but it 
through that re sort of refreshing of the soil and through that um, you know, sort of the cutting of the roots, it, it stimulated some new growth. It responded really, really well. Um, and so we had, even though it had been repotted and previously been kind of like pushed to, towards being weakened, uh, it was partially defoliated. Uh, and so straight, uh, sort of controlling the, the, the energy at the tips, allowing the, the, the light and the air into those inner branches on the inside, inner, inner, inner foliage on the inside. Uh, and then this is the tree now. Uh, unfortunately, this year, um, the, um, the, what's that, the, sort of the conditions in the spring have um, meant that there's been a lot of kind of branches that die off, uh, or not die off, didn't, didn't really kind of like open very well. Uh, and unfortunately, kind of where Anthony is, um, the, the kind of, as the buds were beginning to open up, uh, it was just a quite a sudden sort of cold snap. Uh, and so, that stopped a lot of the branch development sort of coming out um, and caused quite a few of the finer twigs and some of those inner twigs to, to kind of die off. Uh, and because we'd always been kind of like trying to hold this tree back and really restrict the energy levels of it, you know, when you have that type of, uh, of, of incident, um, which is out of your control, you know, then there's uh, the response to that is to, is to then look at no defoliation so that tree is not going to be uh, sort of defoliated at all this year we're going to look at trying to maintain that massive sur photosynthetic surface area um, get as much kind of like energy back into the tree and have, look at then kind of like how we can rebuild some of those inner branches uh, and so that one tree over many many years well not that many it's about eight years uh, has had the technique of, uh, of defoliation applied to it in many different ways depending on the situations. So this year there's going to be nothing done to it, previous years there's been partial, other years when it's been super strong it's been deliberately uh, pinched and then defoliated in order to reduce that, the, the energy levels of it. I'm very grateful uh, to Anthony for A, taking all of those pictures uh, B being very very uh, fastidious with his um, with his record keeping and very very fastidious with his uh, defoliation with his uh, bud pinching. As I said, <clears throat> in the spring he's out there three times a day pinching it. That's how vigorous that tree is, and so that type of tree, the results could only be achieved. Those results could only be achieved by somebody like that who's going to be on top of it all the time. Uh, and so every time I see that tree, I'm just kind of like in awe of, of, of Anthony's kind of ability to, to sort of do that. Um, <clears throat> but it, it's, a, it's a really good um, example of the, uh, the varying applications of the, um, of, of the technique of, of, of defoliation. Okay. And it really is very important to kind of be able to kind of like read the situation uh, and um, understand what's what's appropriate for, for, for the year. Uh, and that's probably about it. That's, that's about as much as I'm going to go through. Um, what else needs to be done other than answering questions? I think that's probably about it. That's as much as, much as I want to say. Um, yeah, I think it's probably about it. So we'll answer some some of the questions. Um, we'll start from the bottom and go work our way up. Uh, no more questions, please, unless they're really, really important, because um, otherwise we'll be here all night. Uh, so Nanny, uh, the question, I saw fertilizer pods in the last picture. How was it fertilized throughout this progression? Very little. Okay, very little fertilizer was applied to this tree. It was a deliberate starvation of that, of that tree because it was so vigorous. Other maples, uh, other situations, the tree is going to be uh, would, would would need to be sort of fertilised small amounts. Okay, it's about again understanding and reading those energy levels and uh, understanding how fertiliser is going to be um, uh, beneficial to to whatever it is you're trying to achieve. So if you're trying to achieve tight uh, internodes and restricted growth in the spring, then fertilising it with nitrogen is, is a bad idea. If you're looking at building up strength and vigour and health then fertilizing it later on in the year and also applying things like organic uh, cold pressed seaweed extracts throughout the year and um, you know that kind of thing is a good thing okay and that was what was what was done to, to, to that uh, Shane the hollow trunk was um, naturally created through um, a catastrophic uh, incident of the top of the tree dying 
uh, and it just kind of um, th th those two branches were then just kind of like left to to, uh, to to develop. I've got a similar tree. Pictures are on Instagram and stuff like that. I'm sure it'll come up uh, at some point. Um, right, can I do a full defoliation on a new con maple as its leaves are absolutely giant? Uh, I would no experience of that. Um, so I'm not going to commit one way or the other. Uh, I don't know. Anybody out there has any any advice on that? Uh, I would be uh, greatly kind of um, interested to know. Uh, I have um, <sighs> got to try and get this in because uh, it causes a lot of um, enjoyment amongst some people out there. This is a, a full moon maple. Uh, the leaves on that are massive. Um, but absolutely no defoliation would, would, would be happening on this. Uh, it doesn't need it. Okay, uh, Sunlight can get into the, those inner branches on the inside. Airflow can get through. Don't need to push for second flushes of growth because it just it doesn't need it for the design. Okay, And so even though those leaves are big, the tree is appreciated for its big leaves. For the colour of them, for the for the for the seeds, etc. So there's there's different reasons why you would why you would um, kind of want that. Um, obviously, kind of trying to get that sort of secondary flush of growth, particularly with the trident maples, where you get that sort of smaller leaves, uh, and with sort of showing um, trees, is one part of the of the the, the, the de of the defoliation sort of technique to try and get that sort of second flushes of growth. Which we haven't really touched on too much. Um, that would be something to look at with uh, with some tridents. And so what we'll do is I'll make some videos of um, some tridents that will then get um, sort of. Uh, I've got some sort of showing uh, tridents and some ones with some sort of large leaves. I'll do some videos of that and then we can look at um, the the leaf reduction uh, in in a future sort of stream. So, um, okay. Uh, would you treat sycamore the same as field maple? I have no idea, mate. I've never worked with them. Um, okay, I think that's most of them. Can you get buds on lignified wood in tridents? If they are very vigorous, yes, you can get them to back bud uh, quite well. Um, other than that, I think most of the uh, questions were... Oh, no, here's one from Paul. Uh Chopping strong maple branches, particularly sacrifices, can lead to dieback. Can you explain some of the strategies you would use to prevent diebacks, such as those used by Ebihara? Um, strategies to uh, avoid dieback would be uh, two-step cutting, um, and that involves cutting through half of a branch uh, at one point. Uh, I'm sure I will have an example of that at some point in the future, but basically, sort of. Uh, Cutting through, I did it on the on the Mirai uh, maple stream. Uh, sort of talked through that, um, but also looking at protecting the live vein um, that is beneath the wound uh, from desiccation and drying out. Uh, and so, th how you'd go about dealing with wounds is dependent on so many different situations. Dependent on how much uh, how much growth is above it. Um, because essentially the callousing of a wound, the, the lack of dieback on a wound um, is dependent on having something above that wound which is going to be sending energy back down to help callous it over and also creating the draw of moisture up through those through li those live veins, feeding them to keep them alive and, and demanding water to, you know, up those, uh, up those live veins to keep it up. So that's a very difficult question to, to answer just in, a, in something like that, but uh, it'll get covered you can be sure of it um, but yeah what you can do again is is kind of like uh, for, for any kind of large wounds like that if they're going to be exposed to the sun just put a towel on them put a bit of sphagnum moss or something keep that whole area moist so that the, the direct sunlight and things like that aren't going to uh, desiccate it and dry it out before the, the tree has a chance to, to, to kind of uh, heal over uh, Steph a uh, partial defoliation could be applied on dry maple new, newly repotted. Uh, I think that's been covered. Um, uh, and the, the important one, um, which I've been waiting to, to kind of answer for, for, from Thomas Galway, do you feed water uh, as normal after leaf cutting? So 
after any kind of like defoliation uh, sort of techniques, the biggest thing to be sort of concerned about is the exposure of those uh, softer, more tender foliage on the inside. Okay. Um, let's get this one back in. <clears throat> so the, the leaves on the inside um, of, uh, of the maple are very similar to the, the leaves of trees that, uh, that, uh, that leaf out in a polytunnel. So we talked right at the start of the stream about you know, um, maples and things. Uh, leafing out in the polytunnel, which is what, usually what happens to me here. Every time I bring them out, there's always going to be some type of issues. Wind scorch, uh, sun scorch, or, or sort of some frost damage and things like that. Because they're very, very soft, because they've not grown up in a normal environment. Uh, and so these inner, inner, uh, the inner foliage in there is very much like that. So it's, it's soft and it's tender. Uh, and if you do a defoliation, uh, sort of partial defoliation, and you put it right out in baking hot sun like we had today, there's a good chance you're gonna you're gonna see some of those leaves uh, curling up at the edges um, uh, and being damaged, uh, and so it would always just look to make sure it's in a sort of a sheltered environment for a couple for a week or so, uh, maybe a little bit longer, so those leaves have a chance to kind of hard themselves off because they're suddenly now out in the sunshine, uh, and then you can just sort of start treating them as normal. In terms of watering, uh, obviously the water requirements maybe have just dropped down a little bit um, because of the lack of foliage, but you know, it's not it's not a tremendous amount. Um, I generally don't think too much uh, about oh, I need to water this less because I've, I've, I've partially defoliated. If you do like a full defoliation, obviously then um, there is going to be a, a massive difference in the uh, the water usage because there's no foliage for it to to, to lose out. But the uh, one thing that you might need to sort of just sort of consider about is the cooling effect of like again if you put um, a completely defoliated tree and it's like really out in the hot sun things like that the middle of the day it's getting really really hot adding some water you know trying to cool it down a little bit is, is something that you might need to do but that doesn't really happen for us here in the UK. Um, so other than that. Uh, in terms of the fertilizing, the, the same ap applies to um, any discussion about fertilizer, it's, as in it is uh, objective based. Okay, If you're looking for a good second flush of growth and for it to, to send out, you know, you do that aggressive um, defoliation technique and then you want that second flush of growth to, to explode out, then fertilize. Okay, If you're just doing partial defoliation to balance up. Um, energy levels and to, to make sure the sunlight and everything get in there then you don't need to fertilize any more than you than you, you are already okay so uh, I think that's most of the questions answered um, you have an after show party over on discord that's very nice um, okay uh, so yeah thank you very much for all your things uh, I did have uh, some some very interesting graphs and things uh, prepared, um, but they they got lost somewhere in 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 the move from one computer to a, to another, uh, and so what we'll do is we'll look at that and we'll go into the the, the energy levels, the concepts when we look at um, beech, elm, uh, and all the others because it's again like I said before, the ideas are very very similar. So when we look at hornbeams, um, when we're looking at beech. We're applying a very similar process and very similar thought thought processes, except you're not looking at getting second flushes of growth. Okay. Uh, so other than that, um, all it is to say uh, uh, thank you uh, to everybody uh, tuning in. Uh, apparently, there is uh, uh, an after party um, on. Oops, sorry. The uh, on, on Discord. So I hope you all enjoy that. Uh, I've got to have my dinner. Uh, I'm not eating yet. Uh, but what I will do uh, is uh, enjoy this uh, this lovely pint of black sheep once again. Uh, this might be my last pint uh, for a while because uh, I'm getting up at five o'clock every morning now. Um, being on daycare, oh dear. Uh, I'd just like to say um, to any of those people who were, uh, I think it was just the one idiot uh, tree goblin going on about the, the Mariah Street Snark competition. So... Uh, thanks for, for those of you who tuned in uh, thanks for the support uh, uh, and cheers, here's to, to watching Ryan on catch up if you've been watching me or here's to watching me on catch up if you've been watching Ryan <laughs>